NTAG Southwest. Now our next presenter is Chief Baghill. He will be going over the um, nuclear program and the different benefits the program offers. For, we're we're going to go ahead and get started with this video, and then after that I'll introduce myself. Uranium in the presence of water will cause fission. That chain reaction produces heat. Uh, we use that heat to generate steam. The steam we use for propulsion and to make electric power. The job in the engineering plant in the submarine and the job in the engineering plant in the carrier are pretty much identical. It starts with the power distribution, so that's that turbine-driven electrical generator, and everything from there goes out across the ship. Every bit of light that we see on board this vessel is produced by us. We always have a standby generator, so if we lose one, parallel it in and have two generators running within probably three minutes. We do maintenance on all electrical equipment on the submarine not just in the engine room for the, the reactor. As far as pumps, as far as the motor controllers for those pumps, circuit breakers. 2E, track 4, quarter 0, DT, track 5, city breaker. Right. So any loose bolts, any uh, chips in the arc chutes here, everything checks out. We use a lot of different types of multimeters to measure the voltage or the resistance or the current of components. We'll check the insulation of it to make sure that something is operating at full efficiency and it isn't starting to wear out over time. You get to work with people who are super intelligent, uh, who love what they do and will challenge you. It's actually a really big space down there and then you interact with you know the mechanics, the ETs on a daily basis. On a carrier, your job is a little bit more specialized where you do mostly just maintenance and qualifications, whereas on a submarine, there's very limited space, so there's very limited people. Everybody has more collateral duties. I think one of the coolest things about working with nuclear reactors is the fact that the ship, besides the fact that humans have to operate it, could go to sea for years and never have to come in for fuel. The enlistment bonus is massive now, $40,000 just to essentially make it through the school. On top of that, re-enlistment bonus is $100,000, and you get half of that right away, so $50,000 in your bank account one day. It's pretty nice. Shows you a little bit behind the scenes of like what it's like to be a nuclear operator. But like it says, we're basically operators of nuclear power plants on aircraft carriers and submarines. So there's 11 nuclear aircraft carriers in the fleet today. There's another one under construction. And then we have dozens of nuclear submarines as well. Um, so just a little background. We were the first country in the, in the world to come up with using nuclear power as an opportunity for propulsion. And, and the main reason is because we saw a lot of short sights in how we were doing it before. So we had an admiral named Admiral Rickover, and he always wanted to look for a challenge. And he found that on, when he was stationed on his first submarine, that there were some challenges that, that he thought there, that could be done better. And one of those was how we do our energy. So before they had diesel submarines and they would basically have to go underwater and then they'd be underwater for just a few hours and then have to resurface to get new oxygen and then blow out black smoke. And then they'd go back underwater and do the same thing. They would keep, they would keep going underwater and uh, being gone for just a while and they have to resurface, put black smoke in the air, get new oxygen. And each time they did that, that black smoke was kind of making a big connect the dots pattern in the water if you looked above. So submarine's main mission is to stay hidden. And it's real hard to do that when you're basically giving away your position every time you come up and surface. So he discovered that nuclear power, which was being kind of harnessed like around the world for different things. He's like, why can't we use that in our, in our Navy? And so that's, a, that's kind of where it all came from. So a little bit about myself. My name is Chief Baglio, and I've, I've been in the Navy for like 17 years. Um, it's got about to be 18 in just a couple of weeks, so pretty excited about to hit my Navy birthday. Uh, um, I joined actually two years into college, so I was uh, going to Cal Poly Pomona. I'm sure some of you probably heard about it. It's not that far away from here, and I was going there to become an electrical engineer and decided at my two-year point when a friend of mine joined the Navy that, that there were so many opportunities that the Navy offered that I wanted to put my education on pause. So I did go back and complete my degree, but I, I let the Navy help me with that. And so I'll kind of go over that in a second as well. So I've been on three aircraft carriers. I've been stationed uh, in San Diego as well as Norfolk, Virginia, which I'll show you. And uh, it's been an awesome ride ever since. And I, I love it. I thought when I was joining 
before I joined that I had no intention of joining. My dad was in the Navy. He was uh, IC man, intercommunications. Uh, he worked with like the like all the uh, the phone communication lines across the ship, as well as the gyro, uh, which is kind of like how they navigate. And uh, he he loved his time in the Navy, but I always saw myself doing something totally different. And then little did I know, I would not only join the Navy in his footsteps, but I would outperform him in every way. Uh, uh, he he was only in for three and a half years. I've been in for seventeen years, and uh, and he he's I think he's living vicariously through me now. So moving on to the next slide, uh, we're going to go over some of those benefits that we offer. So with the nuclear power program, like I said, you're learning a skill that is valued like all over the all over the country and all over the world, uh, and so we pay you for that. We give you a forty thousand dollar sign up bonus. We give hundred thousand dollar reenlistment bonuses. The forty thousand dollar sign up bonus is the biggest bonus that the Navy offers to anybody. And so we offer it to our program. $100,000 for reenlisting is because of how much money the Navy invests in each one of the students that go through our training. It costs the Navy about $600,000 to train each one of our sailors to do this program. So as a result, they do everything they can to keep you interested in staying in longer so they can get more time out of you since they've invested so much upfront for you. And they also know that there's a lot of opportunities outside the Navy that are going to that are going to be very enticing for people to get out. So they have to try and incentivize you to stay in by giving you more money. Um, you get to enlist as an E3. So you're coming in as a, as a third pay grade. Rather than being E1 or E2, you're coming in as an E3. And then upon completion of your first school, you're automatically promoted again to E4. So we give a lot of advanced promotion and quick promotion, which is obviously cool because you get to have the, you get to have the respect of having the higher rank, but you also get more pay. We give tuition assistance and, G and the GI Bill to help you with college. GI Bill pays for your college outside, like after the Navy, and tuition assistance is used to pay for courses while you're in the Navy. So I was able to complete my degree with tuition assistance and save my GI Bill for, advanced, for an advanced degree after the Navy. And then also licensing and certifications. You get certified as a nuclear operator, which you'll see coming up slides is, has a lot of value. And then uh, there's opportunity to get those college credits as well towards a degree, which is what I did as well. And if you go on the next slide, you'll see like how the college credits work. So if you can see on the right-hand side, there's all these different college credits that you get for going through our training pipeline because you're learning um, all sorts of things that are in a, a undergraduate degree, such as like physics and, and chemistry and like thermodynamics, all these different scientific uh, classes that go towards engineering. So if you're interested in any kind of engineering program, then this is going to help you along the way. Um, when I joined, I had, I had about uh, two years worth of college credits, but they were all general ed. So I didn't have anywhere near enough to graduate because I didn't have any of those core classes. But after I completed nuclear um, pipe, the nuclear pipeline for training, um, I had 77 college credits that were very tailorized to engineering. And I was able to complete my degree in nuclear engineering technology by only doing seven additional or eight additional classes. It was seven classes and then like a big project, which counts as a class by itself. So uh, pretty, pretty awesome. It didn't take me very long at all. And I, and I was able to complete my bachelor's while getting paid by the Navy. So you get tuition assistance, like I said, while you're doing it, that's what I used. And then uh, you can receive a paycheck while you're in school. So rather than paying for my education, I actually, um, I was paying college as I went. And back then college didn't cost me that much. It was only $500 a quarter, no matter how many classes you took, it was awesome. Uh, you will never find college like that again as far as getting to, um, college rates that cheap, but uh, that was a totally different time. And then my friends that stayed in college, they, they saw those, those spikes in price, and then their college loans ended up costing them between twenty dollars to $30,000 for their bachelor's degree. And so even though I had some of, the, some of that paid up front because I, I only had to pay uh, $500 a quarter, and I was able to pay for it with my part-time job at the California Polytechnic Library. I was just, I was shelving books before I joined the Navy. And uh, I, I, I got to avoid all the student loans and just let the Navy pay for it. All right, so on the next slide, you're gonna see how nuclear power works and like why we use it. So the reason we chose to use nuclear, like I said, is because it's a, it's a way cleaner energy. It's also way quieter and it helps us stay stealthy, but it also lets us stay underwater much longer on submarines and stay out to sea on carriers much longer as well. So if you were, on a submarine or aircraft carrier before, you would have to keep coming in for fuel. Now we've completely done away with that necessity because once we fuel up one time, and when we fill up the core with, with uranium, which is our fuel, um, we're able to stay uh, fueled all the way for 25 to 30 years. So we only have to refuel uh, about halfway through the, the lifetime of the ship 
and then that's it. We only refill one time and then the ship is done because it's it's gotten so old by that point. So we're able to keep our fuel costs low as well as we're able to keep all that extra room that would cost to ship to have all that fuel. We're able to use it for other things. So more technological equipment and we're able to use it for like fuel for the planes on aircraft carriers. So rather than have to keep coming back for aircraft fuel, we get to store a lot more of it on, on board. And so it was, an, it was an awesome opportunity for us to uh, use nuclear power and its energy. And it's also way more stable. Like if you, if you have wind power, if you have hydropower, you're relying on uh, high tides or you're relying on winds, or if you're solar, you're relying on no clouds or no storms. So with nuclear power, it's stable all the way across. You're able to maintain power all the time. And then if you look on the right-hand side, it says a single uranium pellet is equivalent to all these things. So you have 149 gallons of oil, a ton of coal and 17,000 cubic feet of gas. Um, and if you thought about how big is a nuclear pellet, if you have a number two pencil and you look at the eraser, that's how big it is. It's extremely tiny and it has that much uh, power in it that we use for fuel. So the N Navy nuclear power program, like I said, is the oldest prog program in the Navy, uh, in the world for nuclear power. Uh, no country has matched us as far as being as advanced as we are. And we've been, we were the first uh, forefronters to offer it on aircraft carriers and as well as submarines. Uh, we're also, since we have the oldest track record, you would expect us to not have as good of a safety record, but that's not true. Uh, we actually have the strongest safety record because we've never had an accident. So uh, since we've been operating since 1954 and with aircraft carriers since 1960, uh, we've never had a single nuclear accident in all those years, which I think is a pretty good track record. Um, we've We've managed to maintain a complete 100% safety record, which is super important, especially when you think of the news and, and how important nuclear power is when you, when you hear about things and you hear about power plants across the world that have, had, that have had issues. And we've managed to never have a single one. And that's partly because of our technology and how, how great our plants are built. They're actually uh, built to be extremely stable. But on top of that, it's also because of all of our trained operators. So when I went to the school, it was, it was stressed to me how important it was to not only know what's in a book and how to read it, but also uh, to understand why you're doing things. So in other countries and in other like avenues, you'll see that people tend to like really rely on books as crutches when they're doing work. So it's like, oh, this is broken. Let me pull out the book and see what's wrong. And we still do that. But we also understand the principles behind everything and, and the underlying cause of things. And as a result of that, we have thinking operators which is extremely valuable. And that's another reason why we're paid so much is because they know that they can teach us not only enough to do what's in a book, but also to do uh, what's in our mind and, and implement like, like what we think about. So having those trained operators as well as thinking operators allows us to keep that safety record. And then on the next slide, you will see all the different places you could be stationed. So I've actually been stationed in San Diego on aircraft carriers. I was on the USS Nimitz as well as the Carl Vinson. I was actually on that one twice. Uh, I actually rode the Carl Vinson from Norfolk, Virginia, all the way to San Diego. So that was a kind of a cool ride because I got to go around South America and see penguins off the coast. And uh, yeah, I never, I never knew that. I always thought penguins were only in Antarctica. And uh, and it's funny because when you go around the Horn, you're actually close enough within Antarctica that you can see penguins on the ice. And uh, it was freezing, <laughs> just to put it out there. But I've also been in Norfolk, Virginia. And uh, I thought that was a pretty cool place because it was really close to DC and you got to see a lot of the, the awesome history with the monuments and everything. It was one of my favorite places to visit. Uh, I was stationed there for three years. Uh, I got to go to Washington as well to uh, learn soldering. And uh, they teach us NASA grade soldering, which is basically when you have uh, electronics and you're, and you're connecting everything with uh, what they call solder. And all those little connections, all the little pieces that are on a, like a motherboard and things like that, that's all done in soldering. So I got to learn how to do that with NASA specifications. So that was pretty awesome. And one of the things I really liked about Washington was how green it was. Everywhere you looked, it was super green. There were trails everywhere. Uh, I went down one trail and there was a spider there that I couldn't recognize. And it was quite terrifying because I almost walked right into it. And it was about as big as my fist. Uh, so I stopped going on those types of hikes. But when I did go outside of my hotel room, uh, there was there were deer like literally eating outside of my car. And I'm like, this is the kind of wildlife I like. So less spiders and more deer. That's a that was that was a good transition. Uh, but most of my time has been in San Diego, and I've, and I've loved every moment of it. And if you're actually interested in going overseas as well, Japan has an aircraft carrier, and we also have submarines in Guam as well. So since like I talked like I talked about, this is obviously going to be a pretty intense program. Uh, it requires you to go to three different schools. 
So the first school is called A School and that's located in Charleston. It's either three or six months long. If you're, if you're uh, depending on which rating you choose, you'll see it's based on whether or not it's electronic, electrical or mechanical. And uh, you're basically gonna learn all the fundamentals in that school. Uh, the second school is also located in South Carolina. In fact, it's in the same building. So instead of making a left down the hallway, you make a right. They make it look like it's two different places, but it's really the same place. And that's a six month school that teaches you all the science behind nuclear power. So you're learning the physics, the reactor plant design, thermodynamics, all the things that, that make power plants work and why we apply it to a ship or a boat. And then a uh, nuclear power training unit is also called prototype. That's also either in South Carolina or Boston Spa, New York. So you have an opportunity to go to another state if you want for the, for the third school. And that's gonna teach you on hands training. So if you look in the picture, it shows she's operating on a simulator. We, we also have live reactors at both of those locations. So you're operating real reactors which is something that is really hard to do for almost any college. There's only a couple colleges in the country that offer that. And so it's pretty cool that, we're, uh, that we offer that. So you can actually get on hands training rather than just be behind a desk all the time. And so beyond the Navy, there's actually tons of opportunities outside the Navy. If you do decide to stay in nuclear power, then ob obviously the sky's the limit. Uh, they start out at average salaries of about 90 to 120,000. And then if you get your advanced qualifications at those power plants, you'll be making like 250,000. But you can also do different things. It's not just nuclear power. You can either join, uh, like friends I know, uh, there's people I know that work at Tesla, at robotics factories, software engineers for Microsoft and Facebook, data center engineers for Amazon and Facebook as well. And I even know a couple of people that work at SpaceX and all of them think that like love their jobs and they attribute those jobs to the success they had in the Navy under the nuclear power program. So that's basically all I have. Uh, if you have any questions for me, I'd be happy to answer them. Uh, let me just jump in real quick. This is the, the most important question. Uh, when I talk to parents, compared to the average civilian, how much radiation are you exposed to as a nuclear engineer? Oh, great question. So how much, ex how much exposure for radiation? Uh, everywhere we go has radiation signs, which are designed to show people that if you're entering this space, you will be subject to radiation. But uh, it turns out that it's, it's actually a very, very, very small amount. Um, if you were to equate it, I would say, like for me, um, we're allowed to get up to 200 millirem a year, which is just like a number to you. You don't really understand the context of it. But in my lifetime of, in the Navy, so 17 years, I've only received about 20 millirem. So I'm allowed to have 200. I can have, um, I've only had 20 out of the whole time I've been in. And we actually, it's actually shown that you can get three millirem just for flying on an airplane from coast to coast. So right there, like that would have been like a big part of my exposure. And you get exposed to radiation every day and other things as well, like soil, cosmic rays. And it turns out a lifeguard or somebody working outside at airports is getting way more radiation than you do as a nuclear operator. So in, in honesty, you get less than the average person. Any other questions? Have on the chat. Oh, typical day on the ship. So typical day on the ship is, is going to be kind of multifaceted. It's going to be you do maintenance where you're working on equipment to make sure it's, it's uh, working correctly. And you're going to have to stand watch on the on the reactor itself. So basically, you're monitoring it to to operate it and keep it running. Or in port, if we're stationed at, like off the coast of San Diego, then we're going to keep it shut down. So we're just going to monitor it to make sure it's safe. Um, so that's it. Like, it, and it's kind of like a normal work day when you're in port and then out to sea. Then the reactor is always running. So we're on rotating shift work bases to keep it keep it operating. Chief, you had one more question, and then I'm going to introduce Mr. Avila afterwards. Perfect. Uh, and no, I did not <laughs> um, disassemble smoke detectors, but I, they do have a merisium in them, like you said, and so they are radioactive as well. And you can also get radiation from bananas too, potassium. <laughs>